I'm sitting here with my teacher, a man who's had a huge amount of influence on me and my training and my journey in martial arts, Grant Tuhon Lioti Gahe. Um, thank you, GT, for doing this with me. It's, thank you for having us in Bacolo. Thank you for training us. Thank you for everything you've done for me and all the students who are here right now. Good morning, everybody, and good day here. I know we are here in the most beautiful place here in, uh, in Bacolod City, that is around a uh, few kilometers away from the city. And this is the law of nature here in, uh, in the Philippines. You know, we are here with a significant meaning because uh, as believers of our own uh, culture, we believe that we don't cut the trees or kill the trees. Right? We try to shape these trees to make it beautiful. And uh, the preservation of the uh, forest and also the grasses and everything is meaningful to the culture of the Filipinos. So it is a timely occasion that we are here uh, because this is a beautiful place with uh, uh, a rainbow of uh, beauty and splendor of uh, waters and also the trees. And also the environment is perfect. So, GT, I wanted to ask you about your training. We have heard, we know so much about Piki Shakali now. It's all over the world. But something that not many people know about is your training with your grandfather, how you were trained. Can you tell us a little bit about how, how he trained you? Well, it's good that you mentioned that because uh, of all the things that I live is to remember him. Mm. My grandfather is a very sweet uh, old man, but very strict. And since I was the only grandson, he enjoys uh, attacking me by uh, using the whip if I commit a mistake. And he told me one day, he said, you know, some of my son, you are the heir of this throne. I don't want you to commit a mistake because a mistake is a blunder. Whenever you have an encounter with anybody and you commit a mistake, you die. I said, so what shall I do? I said, he said, follow what I tell you to do. Don't ask questions, do not twinkle your eyes or somewhere else. Focus on what I'm telling you, because if you don't listen to me, I will whip you. I said, but you know, that's painful. He said, that is the best of that, because you know, you'll remember it. And uh, we were in our uh, beautiful time, because he always uh, gave me a lecture before uh, breakfast and also in the evening. But the morning is his favorite time, because you know, he wants to express his frustration of <laughs> having, having, no, having no enemy in the area. <laughs> he loves to have an enemy. He likes challenges. You know, I grew up with him from 1938 up to the time the Japanese surrendered to the Philippines. And from time to time we hear bombing, we, hear, uh, we see the airplane flying, and I see the uh, maneuver of the Japanese planes versus the United States plane, and everybody. Uh, he's running to the mountain because our mountain has a mountain. We call it crystal mountain, crystal mountain. And that mountain is covered with tall, with tall grasses, and there are lots of monkeys. <laughs> and that is the place where the civilians go there and hide against the Japanese uh, patrol. So, uh, so many things that I could still remember in my mind and in my and I, I see him. Some time to time he talks to me, and sometimes he uh, gave me castigation by warnings and things like that. He said, you have not followed that, I have to tell you to know. I said, you know, I have so many things to attend, that's why I forget. I, no, 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 no. He said, do not forget what I tell you to do, because if you forget, uh, then I will see to it that I'm going to whip you again. Well, uh, the good things that I have really learned from him is that, since I was the only grandson, uh, he is very careful on my behavior. He always tells me about good manners and right conduct, how to respect the old, how to respect the women also, and also how to respect also the family. And he said to me, he says, you know, my son, he called me my son, you are junior. And he said, you know, when you came out, I didn't name your name with your father, because your father uh, is a wandering Jew, you know, meaning to say, you know, yeah, he is not uh, present in all the time, but uh, he was an auditor of the bank during the time, and uh, uh, he, they are far away from us, around uh, four days of uh, by boat. Oh. It's called the Beagle region. 
And uh, as I grow with him, oh, I only I well knew my grandfather. I don't know my father. So he said to me one day, he says, you know, one day you'll be learning from me some new uh, stories about you. I said, what kind of stories? Stories, he said, stories uh, that uh, will make you angry or will make you happy. <laughs> because uh, your history is very, very uh, confusing and very questionable. He said, what for? He says, I will tell you later. So, but the first discipline that he does is how to greet uh, the old man, how to express your respect. That's why we have that uh, uh, the process of learning through verbiage. This is you seek for knowledge. You give your respect. Give your loyalty. You give your uh, loyalty. You give your uh, you ask for knowledge. Yes, you seek for knowledge. I give you, you give me your respect. And you give your, uh, most important, you give whatever you have in order for you to remember. I said, what is that? He says, you have respect, you have concern and care, you have hospitality. But when you are seeking for knowledge, uh, you follow with uh, respect. Mm -hmm. And then you have to show your loyalty. Uh -huh. And then you have to show your uh, readiness and uh, appreciation for the next action that you will have. So, GT, there are some stories out there about your early training with your grandfather. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story I had heard was from the age of six, he started to train you. And from the age of six to nine, he only made you do footwork on the table. I start uh, my folk work actually when, since I was three. Oh. But the formality is actually going to six. No, but all of these are all important. Mm -hmm. Whether it's small time or a big time, uh, this is small time because that is his uh, emphasis to have a foundation. But uh, the three years old is more on uh, verbalization. Mm -hmm and he show how the footwork is. Now, going back first into the, uh, into the uh, salutations and mm -hmm. also in the respects and everything. You know, he emphasized that I have to always ask him for knowledge. I seek for knowledge, meaning to say, huh, you bring your hand and go to your uh, forehead. Huh? I give. Uh, I, I seek for knowledge. I give my loyalty. After you have the knowledge, you have to be loyal to the old man. Then I give. Uh, you have to, uh, this important, loyalty. You have loyalty is very important because why? Well, what you learn from the old man, he says that you have to be returning it back to him with very important uh, responsibility. So after you go give the toil, then you know you say I'm ready. Uh, I execute, and that's it. So the salutation must be always a major uh, words that you will have to talk to him, and that is meaningful. There is no other things that is more important. So I seek for knowledge. I give you my respect. I give you my loyalty. I'm, I'm ready, ready. I, I execute. execute. All right, so that, that part is already, what they call this, uh, regimental. Mm. Uh, we always talk about it. But as you said, you know, about the footwork. Uh, uh, footwork is nothing else but the uh, application of movement of the feet in rhythm. Uh, when you step to the right, you have to the left, you have to the back, you have to do. So all of these are more motivational because he wants you to develop what you call muscle memory. Mm. He says all other things are important, but this is the one that will save your life, your footwork. So by rhythm, he it was like a, he made it like a dance, or he hit the stick on the table, or 
How did well, he make that's it? Well, that's a part of it. He hit me with the stick with the, with the, with the, in my feet. Oh. And sometimes he whip me with he, he whip me with a uh, with a uh, horse whip. Mm. And at time he tap his hand into the table oh. uh, and and so things. But if he is in the mood, he taps it. Okay. Did, okay. One, two, three, four. So okay. everything was rhythm. Yeah. Well, we don't have any gadget there. He just that. He was the stick to mm -hmm. hit the table. So uh, I'm excited also because you know it. Da 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 da. So he said, you know, when you are learning the footwork, uh, you need to move to the right, you need to do the left, you go to the back. And I said, what's that for? He says, you have to know your enemy ahead of you. Meaning to say, uh, if there's no enemy, there will be an enemy. And that enemy must be practiced right now. Okay. So the footwork came from diagonal line, diagonal back to, uh, back to, back, uh, what do you call that? Bro, the plural triangle. And then you go back into uh, so many things that uh, equip you in terms of uh, responding to any action. So when you make a footwork, that footwork is created uh, by the action of the feet and the action of the hands. So without even encounter, you already find the solution. Okay. Okay. So the thing is, when he commands you to do that, especially on the photo of Zali, is that that is to him satisfaction because, you know, that is what he is. He is a conscious man in terms of uh, remembering some own many, many things. And right, so, mm -hmm. me alone and with my grandmother is the one in the house. He, my old man has a grand, uh, it's an adopted son, but it is not uh, very serious. So this one is all uh, went to me. Okay. And when I was disciplined about this, that means uh, I have to take the pain and take also the training. Mm. Uh, he will uh, deliberate his uh, disciplinary words, mm. meaning to say, uh, he teach you, oh, he teach me what not to do and to teach me what I'm going to do. So what did he say not to do? He says, don't lie. Okay. When you go out from the house, you have to ask permission. Mm. When you have friends, don't be too over-friendly. And the last, he said, do not offer. If they offer you something, do not eat it. Okay. Because they might kill you. See? Mm. But on the other side, he says, you must be kind, and you must be helpful, and you must be respectful to the old. Mm. But especially, you have to be friendly with people. So from that on, I lay down my rules of understanding what is a human being. Mm. So I was small, but I was already opening my eyes and my head into many things that he taught me bird belly. So I carry that on every day. And the fact that you are always dealing with me, because we have a big farm. Mm. Uh, we have a big farm in downtown, and we have a big farm also in the mountain, 100 hectares of land, and we have 10 hectares of rice uh, plantation. So he is independently uh, very sustainable. Right? We get our uh, food from the rice fields, which is around 10 hectares. And then we have also other uh, sources of income from the mountain with coconuts, banana, and everything that we need. Mm. As a matter of fact, during the war, we are uh, modestly the, the richest of all the families and all of the farmers in that areas. Because, you know, he took care of the farming and he attended himself. He always said, the best fertilizer is your foot. <laughs> Do not trust what other people say, oh, I plant this, I plant that. No, your feet is the best. So these are the things that are very memorable. Mm. And of course, you know, I am very attentive to it because he said, anything that I tell you today, I will repeat it the other day, the next day or three days from now, and you cannot remember, remember that, I will gonna whip you. <laughs> so while I was at rest, you know, I was always remember what he told me. So I started to exercise retentive memories. So all of these things that are happening in me is a matter of, I think, dedication from, from his part and also dedication on my part to perform mm. on what he told me to do. I cannot compare him with other people because, you know, I was just alone in the house with my grandmother. We have a big house. We have our house. Our house is the only house that is uh, built with uh, solid 
iron uh, iron tree. Uh, that even the typhoon cannot remove it. Mm. See, but there was a big there was a big typhoon and with flood and it swept out of our house and everybody around 50 hectares of land had been wiped out by the by the typhoon. So the reality of what had I learned uh, from my grandfather is what I am today. And uh, as, I, as you ask, you know, what are the other things that he told me? He told me, of course, huh? uh, uh, how to be very uh, careful in uh, using any kind of weapon. Okay. He said, do not use a weapon if you are not in your right mind. But use it in your right mind and in your right hand so that the enemy will remember that you have a right decision. Mm -hmm. So he is very, very straight into his intention. And of course, since he said, since you are going to inher uh, inherit the property that I leave to you, be sure that all the things that is in the farm, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the farm must be yours, including the falling leaves, mm -hmm. including uh, the tears of the carabaos and the cows, including the animals that are around the house. Maybe we have snakes and we have this other forms of animals that are running around. But he said, one, one important rule, do not kill animals. Do not kill the cow, do not kill the goat, do not kill the uh, chicken and everything. I said, why will I not kill them? We should eat it. Oh, you just go to the market and buy. Mm. Because once these uh, animals, uh, is here in our farm, they are a member of the family. And that time that you know you need them, they will be there. The time that you need eggs is there. Mm. Every time you need something else that you, know, you want to, then they will be there. We have, we have uh, uh, birds, so called, these, uh, uh, these are doves. We have around 2,000 doves all over the trees, wow. right? And the good thing is that, you know, the, the baby, the baby doves are very, very, very nice to eat. So I used to climb the coconut and take some of the small babies, and then I do this, and I said, ah, are you going to kill that? Yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. Said, no, 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 I said, no. All right, I said, I, I, acceptable because they are still small, but when they are big, do not kill anyone. No. So all of these things that have happened gives me a lesson that one day I said, I will have to see to it that I am doing it right. Yeah. But the most important thing that he told me is, I teach you not to teach, but I teach you to, uh, to protect the family and to protect the property. So as I grew up, I never taught anybody, and I am never uh, inclined to teach somebody. Mm. So every time I see people doing their scream and arnish, I say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the good thing is that he wants me to see what he's doing. Every time he has a trouble, he goes, he tells me, he says, ride on the horse. Let's go, babe. <laughs> let's go. And I say, he called me Junior. Mm. Said, junior, let's go. So I ride on the horse with him, you know. So, and I asked him, I said, why do you have to fight these guys? He said, they are bad guys. He said, you know, they want to take our property. Yeah, okay, so. But he said, when I fight, you have to see huh, how I kill him. Mm. You know, how I divide the body into half, how to cut. The air and the how to cut, <laughs> you know, the orientation. <laughs> so I said, okay, I remember that, you know, but I have a small bolo. <laughs> yeah. So I said, so what happened with if you are hit by these people? He said, no, no, don't worry about that. You have to worry yourself. Mm. You finish them, if I cannot finish them. Mm. Right? So I have an uh, uh, high, high, high text mm. uh, of my uh, initiative. So before the before I arrive in the area, the, the, this guy supposed to be tough guys, they run away. So every Sunday we had only that calisthenics of going to another town mm -hmm. and go to the marketplace and looking for stupid guys. <laughs> because, you know, he has tenants. Mm -hmm. And these tenants, before they gave me tenants, they said, uh, Sir, I would like to work in your farm. I said, what kind of work do you want? I said, I can plow the field, I can uh, plant rice, I can plant. What else? He says, we know how to cook and we do this, this. Okay, all right, tomorrow you report. Okay, I said, uh, we have a little house here, that's your house. I have to give you a uh, uh, plow and plow, and mm -hmm. I give you the carabao, and I give you uh, sacks of rice. And if you're family, your family is safe over here. 
So yeah, here yeah, Paul Pilwa she promised. So we have tenants, 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 tenants there. And these tenants are always supervised. And they were fed properly because we have a, a full sacks of rice in our field. But after one or two years, you cannot find the carabao. You cannot find the cow, the, the, the plow, and then the, what you call this, the one that you used to harvest. Hmm. In other words, the whole thing is gone. So my grandfather got mad, so he looked for them. So hmm. when he found them in the market, he slapped with the gnome thing in the sleep case. Oh. Bang! And people were scared, you know, hundreds of people there. He said, I want these people to witness on how I take your head off. <laughs> I said, no, please don't do that, mm. don't do that. Yeah? But my grandfather is very kind of He says, okay, go home. What do you want? I have no food, I'll give you a sack of rice, you go home. Mm. Yeah? So all of this uh, is known to the town. Oh, no, no, the town. Mm. But my problem is when I was growing, I was already five years old, four years, five years old. I have to walk four kilometers away from the house to go to school. And during the time, do we still have the occupation of the Japanese? Mm. And we have the leaves of the banana as our paper, oh. and we have a stick to write our name in the, in the banana. Yeah? And the teacher, our teacher is very ugly. <laughs> he says, his teeth is coming out. He says, Junior, <laughs> huh? you might have God to tell you to your father. <laughs> yes, 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 you know. When the airplane comes in, he rides in the, <laughs> under the chair, <laughs> under the bed. I, so we had fun. I have four of my friends. We walk four kilometers every day. When I we went to, when we go to a Hawaiian issue, I'll show you the place. Mm. Right? And uh, we walk and walk on until. And we have only rice and, and egg going to school. Sometimes banana. So every day with that, right? So we finish our grade four, you have to be in grade five, you have to be in grade six. Okay? Mm. See, so. But I said, every day have a fight because these children, bigger than me, uh, took some revenges from what my grandfather is doing to the father who are oh. stupid. Hmm. So every time I pass the road, he says, do not pass the road, I will kick you. <laughs> so they put a line like that and I step in, he punch me. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes they took my, they took my, uh, my pencil and ran away. So I cannot report to my grandfather also because I don't want to be mad with him because mm. he, if it happened like that, he will say, why do you not hit him? Huh? No. All right, so the thing is, I suffered that for almost three years. But every day, as a matter of fact, my neighbor is only me from here in that house. My neighbor and his, the neighbor and his, uh, the son of this fellow is always picking me up. He's taller than me. He's around the seven years old, he punched me all the time. One day I got mad, and going home I found a, a, a naked, a naked uh, boy scout knife, like mm. an old wool knife, and it is still rusty. So I pick it up and open. Oh, this is nice. And this guy is coming to me. He tried to push me. He says, "Hello." I, <laughs> I stab him in the hand, and the knife got stuck, and he was shouting to his father, and his father saw that his hand was hit. He took a bolo and chased me. Oh. So I ran to my own house. Our house is not very far. And my grandfather saw me running against the guy who is running, chased me. And my father opened the gate. I says, I, what do you want? He says, oh yeah, your son has to stop my son. Oh, you're the next. <laughs> <laughs> so my grandfather tried to chase him, they ran away. So that was our, our, uh, our stage of uh, uh, every day, uh, what do you call that? calisthenics, mm. right? Sometimes, you know, because going to school, you have to pass to the road. Going to home, you pass the road. But they are watching me. Mm. So I go to the, uh, to the shoreline, very far. Now, if it is high tide, I have to cross the creek. Mm. But the creek is not so deep, the water is only here. So I put my notebook on my head <laughs> and walk on, <laughs> on the creek, on the water. And the creek, and yeah, yeah, right like that, and I cross the road. Then I, 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 I sneak in and go to the back of the house and change my clothes. Because if my grandfather saw me that I'm wet, he said, ask him, why are you wet? No? So I do that. <laughs> so when, he, when, when, he, when, he, when I finish already, 
He called me, Junior. Yes, Lord. Uh, I call him Papang. He said, Papang, okay. I know that. Wow, how is your school? How is your school? Okay. Uh, you have gone great? Yes, 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 yes. Then he says, okay. Uh, your math time, math. You know? He says, one times one, two times two, two times three, two times four. I said, don't be in a hurry. <laughs> don't be in a hurry. I cannot ask yourself. Okay, he said. Okay. All right. You multiply one uh, times two. You multiply two by three. I can multiply three by four to multiply. But we cannot multiply that. Because, you know, one is one and three is three. How could I multiply three? <laughs> I fight with him. He says, don't argue. Multiply it. Okay, one times three equals three. Yeah, it's correct. It's correct. Yeah, you're very right. So we have all these calisthenics, you know. So he twists my brain. Uh, I have nothing to do because, you know, I have to see it that I follow him, okay? Mm. But I was uh, mathematically trained, you know. Eh? Uh, in all sense that uh, he says, you know, uh, arithmetic is an exact science. Huh? Uh, this is the good for you because if you want to be a businessman, you'll be rich. Mm. Right? But if you are a thief, you cannot lose, you lose more money because you don't know how to count. <laughs> so he has some ways of entertaining me at the same time. He's mad and he's happy. Mm. In order, he punched me all the time, something that is challenging. So all the cycles now, when I was in the grade six, I graduated in grade six. When I graduated in six, he didn't go to school to, to attend my graduation. Because I don't have a clothes, I have a short pants on everybody, <laughs> have a long, long, long pants. <laughs> so when, uh, the, all the schools and the, all the children there and the parents were there. I'm the only one with the shorts. <laughs> and he saw me. He says, hey, come here, come here. Why you have no pa long pants? Where is your long pants? I could not find it. I said, stop, stop the, can the graduation. My gun, we have to go home and get this <laughs> pants. So I ran to home and put my pants on. Uh, he says, okay, yo, it's okay. He said, hey, uh, the graduation is going to start now. <laughs> so, uh, I myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed because, you know, I am doing bad. Mm. Then, uh, from that time on, you know, we, we continue our relationship. And uh, we go to Bacolod and visit relatives who are doing a homecoming and some uh, family reunion and things mm. like that, you know. And uh, associated with the cousins and relatives. We have very plenty of cousins and mm -hmm. relatives. But the, good, the bad thing is that uh, my grandfather right, is a very religious person. He came out to be, to be a, in the Catholic mm -hmm. and he went to the Seventh day Adventist. Mm -hmm. So he was more of a, mini, a minister, not minister, but a preacher mm -hmm. in Seventh day Adventist. And of course, he's, uh, he's uh, being tough mm. because Adventists are not like this, like this, like that. So, there was a time that, uh, you know, uh, the Catholic parade, there's a, there's more a ceremonial parade or some religious parade, past the house. And some of his friends called him, Conrado, Conrado, join the procession. He says, no, no, no. He says, your God is not God. Mm. He's a God of hell. Oh. My grandfather took the good thing <laughs> and tried to chase the the good one in parading. He was parading and he ran away and he left the, left the other people there. He said, no, no, don't tell me my God. My God is better than you. Oh. No. So it became a big question in the Catholic Church. The attempt of the interview that we, that you guys just saw was an attempt by me to try and understand where GT's training came from, um, to get stories of how his grandfather trained him. But if you spent any amount of time with GT, you know and you realize how hard it is to steer him on a course other than the course that he wants to go. Um, and so even though we didn't get so many stories about his own training, I think we got something equally amazing. Uh, we got a lot of stories about his upbringing and his childhood and a lot of that goes into um, understanding how he solves problems now all the things that his grandfather gave him you can still see in the way gt lives his life his own expression of those things and when he has a 
problem pikiti related martial arts related life related he often falls back to that wisdom of his grandfather and so it may not be the interview that i set out to try to get but at this at the end of it i'm still very grateful because there are a lot of these stories that having known gd for so long i also did not know these stories and so um i hope that you guys enjoyed enjoyed this as much as i did i'm going to try and do another one tomorrow and um hopefully we we get as much exciting stuff out of that as out of this but thank you guys so much for watching and thank you zareer for helping me and thank you gt for being gt and thank you konrado his grandfather for for giving us gt essentially